Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Monday morning, President's Day. It is February 21st, 2022, and I'm reading a devotional from crosswalk.com. It's called God's Will. So simple, it's hard. And this is by Sean Mc... Mc... McAvoy. Sorry, Sean. Scripture reading, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Apostle Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So Sean writes, God's will for my life. How often have you pondered that notion? No, uh, studied, studied it, read untold books about it. No people who tortured themselves trying to locate it. Well, here we have an obvious chunk of it, even compact and useful, just as we like things to be, tucked away at the close of Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. This is God's will for you, it says. Well, yes, it says that, and it sure is pretty almost poetic, but is it deep enough? Shouldn't there be more? Is it practical? Okay, then let's go to the Old Testament prop, uh, the Old Testament Prophetic action-oriented Micah 6, 8 says, <clears throat> this is a prophet, a minor prophet, means he got a little bit written about him or a little bit of his writings. Major prophets are the ones that have most of the writings. It doesn't mean one's more important than the other. Micah 6, 8, he has told you, old man, what is required of you, what is good and what the Lord requires, that you do justice, love, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. It's still simple, still bunched in a group of three, still indicating that there's no big mystery way far out there, mystery far, way far out there that we, which must be solved before we know how to act or decide or how God wants us to act or decide. So if you want to know God's will, Micah 6, 8. This is what the Lord requires of you to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. So why do we ask for more? I think it's because the ridiculously sh simple, paradoxically enough, is ridiculously hard, and we know it. See, uh, G.K. Chesterton famously said, The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. <laughs> so to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. I do not see any of that going on in the world today. We could spend a lot of time discussing the ins and outs of how easy or hard God's will is or where else in his word we can find snippets of it. One woman from my Bible fellowship class is fond of asking, asking these during our lessons. What does that look like? Let's ponder on that for a minute. The situation is this. You've been sent out on a missionary journey via a clear calling from God. The resources were there, the people willing. You are leading your group through a city when you encounter a psychic who keeps taunting you. After a, while, after a while, through calling on the name of Jesus, you cast out the evil spirit within her. Hooray! Score one for the Lord and your group. But alas, there is no praise here because those who have been making some cash off the now set free woman's powers aren't happy with you. They drag your group before local law enforcement. How have you beaten and, have you beaten and thrown into prison? Hey now! This is from, this is, uh, from the book of Acts. At this point, I'm saying, God, this is not your will. You made it very clear we were to come to, on this trip, and we even did a miracle for you. Now we're injured in jail. I don't even know how I'm going to go home, get home, much less continue to be effective for you from here. I want a telephone. I want a lawyer. I want you to reveal your actual will right now and suffer no more discomfort while doing what you sent us to do. And with that, my missionary journey would come to a close, but not the Apostle Paul's. Not as we have it recorded in Acts 16, 16 through 40, which is one of my all-time favorite passages. Paul, who knew God's will better than I and practice it, knew to rejoice. And so bloodied and with his feet in stocks, he sings seriously. He sings hymns of praise. He also knew to pray without ceasing. And so in verse 25, that's exactly what you find. Paul and Silas praying at midnight, even. The missionaries on this journey got out of God's way by doing the simple things that God had willed for them to do so that God was free to let fly his own big, complex, miraculous will for everyone else. An earthquake shakes open the prison, snapping chains in the process. Prisoners, however, stay where they are. A jailer about to kill himself holds his, at, his sword 
and moments later accepts Jesus into his heart. Then his family joins the flock, all because he had persecuted, because he had persecuted, chose to, because he had persecuted, chose to love kindness. That doesn't make any sense. At every step of the way, Paul, Silas, and their companions chose to walk humbly, give thanks, and do what was just. Speaking of which, once officially released, Paul did some words of justice regarding their citizenship and treatment for the magistrates. It's absolutely amazing to me the ways that God plans to accomplish his will, big W, on earth. His will in my life has already been decided. It is my job to walk humbly, get out of the way, always be in prayer, always rejoicing no matter what situation I'm in. But how often do we back, come back to the same situation? Sitting in my car, simple traffic jam, me needing to be somewhere, telling God, did you not ordain that I should do such and such today or get this amount of work done so I can spend this amount of time with my family? Then this is on you unless you make such and such happen now. Hmm. How many miracles have I missed? Being in a hurry. No, God's will for my life isn't difficult to know. It's just frustratingly hard to do if self is at the center. And that's the crux of the very question itself. What is God's will for my life, not what is my will for my life? <laughs> Perhaps when we get out of the way, we shall see better. How long will it take to learn the lesson that even if I know I'm doing God's will, it doesn't mean everything will appear to go smoothly along the way? That there are purposes I either don't know or am unwilling to consider. Could it be, an in, could it be part of inconvenience? If you're like me, start learning today by making note of every story in the Bible that suffers a delay, interruption, inconvenience, or other problem before God's promise paid off. Hint, start with the guys like Joseph and Abraham. <laughs> so we know that Joseph, um, Jacob's favored son, was thrown into or was sold into slavery by his brothers. Long story short, he went to prison, could interpret dreams, became Pharaoh's um right-hand man to distribute food during a famine and he and it took years he was in prison for years for something he didn't do and um lo and behold it works out for god's good because god needs a remnant of god's people and there's a famine so instead of them all starving off joseph brings his family which was fairly large jacob's family and um lo and behold they're saved and all his brothers which we know Jacob's brothers were the 12 tribes of Israel. So, God's people. I guess what this writer is saying to us today is we pray to do God's will, and then we get out there and try to do it, and something gets thrown in our way. We're like, is this really what you wanted me to do? <laughs> we do it all the time. <clears throat> I think I would pray instead, God, if this is still your will for me in this direction, unless I've taken a wrong turn, because sometimes we do. Sometimes we think we're going the right way, and we make a mistake or something happens and God's like, no, I didn't say do that. Come back here. Come back here to me. And so he may make a delay, an obstacle, something that we have to pass through or go around to accomplish his will. Because he's got other people, you know, that he's got to put in place to get that will done. So not that he, we're puppets on strings, but a lot of us make decisions based on ourselves, and therefore we go off the, we take a detour and God's like, Okay, you could take a detour, but that's going to be a dead-end road. And once you figure that out, you'll come back here. So pray for God's will to be done. It's not difficult. Um, you know, we know what Micah said. God said through Micah, do justice. When you see something that's not right, speak up. Try to help. Speak for the voices that can't speak for themselves. I think of elderly people, special needs people, and children. Walk humbly with the Lord. Meaning, don't think more of yourself, put God first, and then your spouse, and then your children, and then church activities. Um, but remember, we are the church, and that is in and, in and through the church, the only place where people find Jesus. Somebody's got to talk about Jesus. Somebody's got to live like Jesus. Somebody's got to speak like Jesus. Somebody has to do something like Jesus, so people will be like, oh, that looks better than the way I'm living. And so do justice, love kindness, or mercy. I think it, mercy was another translation. So when you want to bite back, when you want to spread those rumors, when you want to spread hate, love kindness. We're in the kindness month, so be kind. And then walk humbly with God, meaning know that you're a servant of the Most High. 
you were not in charge. <laughs> if we could just get that out of our heads. All right. I hope you have a good day. Let's pray for God's will to be done in our lives today. And when we find those obstacles, we patiently wait because there could be something going on. Somebody needs to run into us so that we can talk to them or they can listen. We can listen to them. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your will. The only way it's going to get done is through those who believe in you. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we thank you for using us. That is miraculous in enough in itself. Um, a lot of us think, oh, I can't do God's will. It's too difficult. It's too hard. You've clearly stated it in many of the prophets and many of the lives of the people in the Bible that we can adhere to and listen to and read about. Do justice, love mercy, kindness, and walk humbly with you. So help us to um, do your will. And when we come across those obstacles, let us pray that we make sure we're still on the right path. And if we are, maybe we need to be patient through that obstacle as we go around it, or maybe you'll take us through it. And in and through it, you will continue to do your will. So we pray this for each person watching, listening, and passing this on to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Enjoy the cold weather again. Bye-bye.